Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I got a guy on the phone, on the, on the horn here that we've uh, interviewed before. His name is Jeff and his last name is Harmon. And can you hear me loud and clear, Jeff? Yes, I can. I can hear hey. you real good. Now, are you located on the West Coast? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm out here in California, just uh, north of Los Angeles by about 25 miles. We're, we're next to uh, a little town called Calabasas. I've heard of it. Yeah, th south of uh, Thousand Oaks. So sounds like something Bugs, Bun Bugs Bunny would. Talk yeah, about. right. I'm taking right turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I don't do these too long because people got that commodity of time. So I kind of keep them tight just to get to know who you are and what you do and everything. And then what I do is I propagate it out to the internet and people can find it. So there we go, Jeff. Are you married and got kids, or I can't remember? Yeah. Yep. I have one child and my, my wife helps me out here. So that's always nice. Yeah. Yeah. It works great. Certainly. Now, if I remember right back in the day when I, in, I interviewed you, I think a year ago or something like that. Yeah, it was something like that a couple of years ago, probably more like two or three years ago. Yeah. You're involved with like horoscopes and astrology and my audience is from, it's a spectrum. So some people don't believe in that kind of thing. Mm. And I, like the whole concept of intuitive, you know, people saying, oh, you can, you can read things. It's like, to me, it's, it's like, it just makes common sense that if you're just kind of aware of people, you can kind of intuitively tell, are they aggressive? Or are they not aggressive? Mm -hmm. And the whole thing about the planets and all that, if the earth can pull on the ocean and move the tide in, and if our yeah. body is 90% water, it's going to have an effect. So I don't understand all the inner workings of all that stuff, but I yeah, well, it's that. it's a little bit beyond gravity. That was kind of cool about two hundred years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's not gravity. I can tell you that. Well, I think that all um, the planets have gravity, and then yeah, all the all the bodies, the celestial bodies, have some kind of gravity to them. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would tell you this, that, you know, let's put away all the hocus pocus about astrology and mirrors and crystal balls, smoke and incense. I, I would say what's going on right now is this coronavirus. Um, for the last decade, I, um, I've been warning that this would be a very challenging time for the world. And I would really call this not horoscopes and all that, but it's really, uh, it's, it's astronomy. It really is. The, the ancient historians uh, could, could probably rewrite history if we included astronomy as astrology. And it really is astronomy. Galileo, Kepler, so many, uh, all the way back to, to many of your ancient um, people who were in science called it astronomy, but it really was ast astrology and astronomy are kind of synonymous, especially when you get into the ancient stuff. Modern astrology, I think, has digressed a lot into sun sign stuff. But one of the things that I, I've noticed is that um, about a decade ago, I was on a lot of large radio shows and everyone was asking me about the Mayan calendar. What do you think of the Mayan calendar? I said, not much. Um, I couldn't come up with anything. And this coronavirus broke out very, very close to what we call a Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And that happens about once every 35 to 40 years. And we also had a very special condition. I was going to show you this on the screen, but we can't share screens right now. Um, all the planets right now are in between what we call the ecliptic points where eclipses happen, the moon's north and south nodes. And um, that... Every time that happens, weird stuff in the world happens. And the media went berserk over this, even though three quarters of the planet was denying it was even a problem until the latter part of February. In the latter part of February, that's when it caught wildfire. Remember that? Yeah. Everybody went nuts. And um, it's right when Mars crossed the moon's south node, which is a mathematical point where the sun and the moon and the earth line up. And the interesting thing is it's, it just, it's been kind of playing out so accurate. It's eerie. And by the time we got into, um, you know, March, it was escalating. And I think it's going to escalate a little bit more if the, if the charts are right, if the astronomy is right, I think, we're going to start to see a taper by the latter part of this month. And we may, let's pray and hope, uh, see this 
start to, to turn the page and, and head somewhat back to normalcy. I don't know if we'll ever get back to normalcy completely That's after this the one. Mindset, the way that people are thinking now. I mean, people used to go to work and go, I don't want to be to work. I want to be home. Right. God, I've had my enough home. I want to go to work. Yeah, right. Well, everybody's going stir crazy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you bet. So how does that, I mean, okay, you see these two things. You got the astrology, astronomy, the way that the plants and planets and the celestial bodies are moving around. And right. then you've got the things that are happening on planet Earth with this virus thing. How does that connect? You said it wasn't gravity. What is it? Well, I mean, well, that's a whole nother, you know, exceedingly detailed topic. I mean, many physicists that, that are looking into this, it's operating, you know, gravity is, there's probably less gravity um, between, you know, you and a person standing in the room than there is with some of the outer planets. So the theory is, is that it's a matrix. Um, you know, when you, if you stick to the left brain science, it's, it's going to be uh, operating on a vibrational frequency that's much, much higher than gravity and, and much different. Uh, some people call them torsional waves. Some people refer to those as forces that are etheric energy. So it's a much, much different concept than gravity. But, you know, to go down that road is really an effort and futility because anything I say will be refuted by scientists and and all the other geniuses who think they think they know where it's all going. No one really fully understands it. Um, I can just say I'm a skeptic. When I got into astrology, it was the mid seventies and I was actually skeptical of it. And I, I only go by just like science. Does it work or doesn't it? You know, does it work or doesn't it? And um, the aspects the geometry really seem to show up <clears throat> again. I've been saying for a decade that um, this was the time to really be concerned with the world. And I, I really think World War I broke out on a Saturn-Pluto conjunction literally within uh, weeks. And the interesting thing was uh, the next cycle ended World War II and began the Cold War. So if you look back through history, I mean, the Roman Empire officially kind of dissipated back, you know, way back in the I think it was the end of the fourth or fifth century. So all these cycles seem to show up and we're in one right now that is uh, going to change the world. It's going to change well, the world. When people hear this stuff, including myself, they wonder how it works. Is it kind of, you just got to kind of accept it. You, you see the patterns and the, the way things are moving and then things that are happening, you just kind of accept it. Kind of like you accept that uh, five letters together create a word and it's just a word. Just read it. Don't worry about why it created it. Well, you know, if you, if you want to pursue um, how, how does astrology work, you know, because then you're now getting into a debate where the skeptics love this stuff. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, again, I'm not here to prove or disprove astrology. Um, it's been around for thousands of years. Um, I mean, it actually goes back to the Andaluvian times and, and uh, the cycles um, you know, like the, the founding fathers of this country were Masons, and they certainly were following the geometry. I mean, if you, if you get into ancient astrology, it's looking at geometric patterns. In terms of the science of how it works, I mean, that's, again, uh, it's not gravity. It's, it's certainly operating on a much higher uh, dimension. And there are many who believe, you know, in the Bible, there's actually the 72 angels in Exodus that rule the firmament. Because a lot of astronomers laugh at astrology. They, I know, I've been around it all my life, where they, they really believe that none of the constellations line up. And they're right, they don't. They do not line up in neat, orderly ways like astrology shows it. And there's many different types of zodiacs. There's the lunar zodiac, there's the tropical zodiac, there's the sidereal zodiac. So it's, you know, when, when you go down that road of trying to prove how it works and how it doesn't work, it, it's a really dicey thing. The only thing I can say is, is um, the alignments, in other words, the geometry that has been the standard practice of use, using astrology for thousands of years is pretty amazingly accurate. When you look at it, it's so the cycles. Does that fall into like the the seed of life and the flower of life and the egg of life and the Taurus and all that kind of stuff? 
Well, I mean, all that's relatable, yeah. But no, this is, if you saw astrology, it's, it's hard geometry. It is literally looking at zero degrees. It's degrees and minutes of a circle. And we look at how they're juxtapositioned from the geocentric position of the Earth. It's, it's astronomy. In fact, one of the guys who developed these programs that I use was actually consulting with NASA back in the early, late 70s, early 80s. And it was pretty amazing how they said the ephemerises, which is the positions of the planets, are, are very, very accurate in these programs. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. NASA has, has a real occult history, too. And when you look at, you know, JP, JPL and you Jack NASA, Parsons. NASA, NASA, or NASA? Yeah. NASA, yeah. I mean, the, the original former <clears throat> of, of JPL, Jack Parsons, was really into this stuff. They, they look at it from a number of viewpoints. And again, you know, it's just like when we look at electricity, you can take a voltmeter and measure things and, and uh, we can't see it. We can't prove it or disprove it, but we certainly can get the utility. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very mathematically provable. I mean, yeah. electronics and electricity has changed. That's this what world. I find interesting about it. It's it, this situation. I could sit and talk about this stuff for a long, long time. Cause you, yeah, yeah. you know, even like, even looks something like the full moon and people act weird. They do. I don't know how or why. Oh yeah. There's statistical yeah. data that, that really, even uh, there's been many reports where, you know, police reports and things have increased on certain um, phenomena like that, absolutely. And, and I find <clears throat> eclipses, too, have a very powerful effect on the world. And uh, wh what I'm seeing here is, again, the astronomy or astrology, however you want to preface it, really was kind of eerie how accurate it was when these conditions lined up. And when I say these conditions, it's hard to show you, you know, by, by just talking here in front of them, of a, of a video camera, but um, if we could have got the computer sharing going, I would have shown literally there's mathematical points called nodes, which are the moon's north and south nodes. And they're in what we call a couple of lunar mansions. In fact, the AIDS virus broke out <clears throat> when the same condition happened. SARS was another one. Um, going back to uh, major events like the JFK assassination happened very close to when these alignments happened. So these really tend to line up with um, major events in the world. And uh, I, I find that... Um, Maybe later you can figure out how to do that and we could do another thing next week or something. And kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know what you're saying. If, it, if this is this and then this thing is that, it lines up. It makes sense, right? You could, you could I don't stuff. know who you are. Yep. But you, I don't yeah, know who well, you are either. <laughs> so the, the um, yeah, it, it, it's hard to show, but I, I can tell you the phenomena of uh, the alignments were pretty amazing. I mean, the media broke out in this country uh, with, with just – if we go back and look at the timelines, in fact, a lot of newspapers and, and uh, media outlets are putting together timelines right now, because basically, I think this virus may have been manifest in late fall, early winter in China. And I, I really think the reports about um, it escaping out of a lab is probably true. That's what I get. There's a type of astrology that's called interrogation, where you can literally just look into something being true or not a report and i i constantly get that that one is likely to be true that 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 did escape out of a lab in wuhan i don't came from that market <clears throat> and um it makes sense that's, that's what everything is showing too both you know I, I always like to look at things more scientifically like is reality matching what the ast astrology says <clears throat> and if that's the case it's probably true so, so and, and your work it looks like that. More, uh, related to your work and stuff. What do you, who do you do this for when you do these things? Are you doing these things for organizations or individuals or? Well, both. Um, I, I have a lot of clients who um, get readings where they want to look at the cycles in their lives. And then I also have a lot of people in businesses. They do various different things like business contracts. They do things uh, related to selling real estate. Uh, surgery elections. I mean, it's uh, there's all kinds of different people I work with in this, and um, so it really varies. 
Uh, of course, right now, things are slower. People are more interested in when is this virus going to end and how does it relate to them you know, and their finances. Right I mean, yeah. yeah, it's, it's clear. And what you've seen, it, can you see where things are going to come back to uh, what we call normal? Where people <clears throat> well, the, the chart leans towards, the cycles really, uh, this whole, what we call um, phenomena, it's, it's kind of a strange word. It's called a Kalasarpa Yoga. Um, which is where all the planets are on one side of the moon's north and south nodes. And it's a very unusual phenomenon. Um, it happens quite a bit, but um, that breaks for us right around May 27th. And that's when I think we're going to start to see either a partial or a major movement to get the, the country back on track. <clears throat> I mean, for sure, if we don't get back on track, it's going to be catastrophic financially. It already is catastrophic financially. Yeah, I was watching some stuff of how they are getting people back together in some of the restaurants. And it's basically they, they come in, they have a mask on, and instead of right. an appetizer, you get hand sanitizer. Yep. yep. <laughs> then they wipe down the menus and everything. It's just, I don't even know if I want to go out to eat in a situation like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's scary, <clears throat> you know, because this virus is real. And, um, you know, I mean, if people who get it, they really get sick. I've, I've seen a lot of people. I've had some clients who've been really, really sick. And, you know, some people are really dying from it. So it is something you don't want to get. And I think, you know, by the way, <clears throat> the 1917 uh, Spanish flu outbreak, which they say wasn't so Spanish, that actually came out of China as well. That's what the reports were. We lost like 50 million documented people, but the estimates were, it could have been up to 100 million people. You know, that's amazing. And you think about that. And that was probably because the social distancing wasn't going on. I mean, we kind of live in a blessed time that we have all this media that gives everyone so much information. And then that way we're more alerted. Well, what you do know, you think of the media that doesn't, it seems like they're, you know, it seems a little biased. Well, they're more than a little biased. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the political rhetoric going on back and forth. And that's, well, this is an election year. That so it is, is disturbing to me is some people that I think they're kind of naive and ignorant. And I don't mean ignorant as stupid. I mean, they're ignoring the real deal, but they just buy into it and then they start propagating it. And it creates a bunch of, uh, false information, then people get angry, and there's going to be situations where nobody's got any disease or, or illness or virus. They just kill people because they're crazy. Mm, yeah. Well, there's a lot of scenarios going on out there, and, you know, the, the, the whole motivation behind the development of this thing was a, a possibly military on, on uh, China's behalf. I mean, there's, there's some very good documentaries out right now on the internet, circling the internet that are, are covering that. And I, I think there's some truth to that. I really that do. Include that whole 5G thing? Well, th there's that too. People say that every time, you know, radar was invented, that it might have had something to do with the Spanish flu and that um, it, it messes with our, our um, ability to, for our cells to, to ward off viruses. So there may be some truth to that. Um, c clearly, 5G is, is kind of eerie. It, it just came out right when all this uh, happened. But I, I really think that um, this is, is leaning towards, uh, it, it was a, a, they were developing and it, it got out. I think somebody caught it and it got out. That, that's what the charts indicate. And, and I would tend to say that, um, this might have been earlier than they even claimed in China. Yeah, and China be, clearly tried to cover it up. It could be a, a double thing if the 5G has something where it lowers a person's immune system. Then this yeah, thing it could. It's going to be more susceptible to it. So. It, it definitely could, no doubt. Part of no life, doubt. right? <laughs> yeah. That's part of the deal. So, yeah. Jeff, how do people get a hold of you if they want to learn more or uh, you know, connect? And uh, The best way is Jeff at JeffHarman.com. J E F F H A R M A N dot com. Yeah. You keep it real simple. I like that. Yeah. 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 My wife helps me. She's really great with people. So it works out good. But yeah, a lot of people are really questioning the reality of going forward. And, you know, it's, money is tight. It's really, really tight right now for everyone. And, 
you know, the entire economy shut down. And, and it's interesting when you look back at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in 1914, it had that kind of an effect on the world. It was huge. I mean, <clears throat> World War I broke out and the whole, you know, within the next few years, the whole world was so affected. I think this is going to really have an indelible effect on us. Well, this is um, huge. It's cause huge. It, it's uh everybody's money nobody's work i mean very few people are working i i was just ramping up yes, in the event industry so events hospitality travel and tourism oh god <laughs> yeah you really got it <laughs> that's bet. why what i've done is i've rekindled it in this whole uh, synergy lifestyle academy thing and starting to do these interviews again right right is, uh, <clears throat> well i i think the good news is at the end of this year this is going to be a crazy year not only because it's an electional year but we have a um, venus is going retrograde right in may we have a bunch of planets that go they appear to go backwards from from the earth's perspective and um this is always this is what we call an inferior conjunction meaning it venus will pass between the earth and the sun and whenever this happens, there's always a lot of strange events that happen. And all this starts happening in May. I, I would say expect the unexpected this, this coming May. Is it the beginning of May or the end of May? It's, it starts on May 12th. But it, when it goes through the eye of the sun, which will happen uh, right by the latter part of May, beginning of June. So May into June into July, this is going to be a lot of crazy energy. I think reorientating everyone and getting everyone back on track. But it leans towards this is going to pass. And I think, I think even though a virus is along, or I'm sorry, the, the um, uh, antidote or what, are the, what do they call it? The, um, the, the ability to have an inoculation to, to stop this vaccine. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that is going to be a ways out. But I, I think they're ignoring a lot of things that are helping people. There's, there's a lot of natural remedies, too, that seem to bolster the immune system. Not that I'm saying it cures coronavirus, but, but, no, but uh, there's a lot of things people can do. There's still the cold and the flu, and I don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't, uh, you're lucky. <laughs> because, yeah, you're lucky. Because of my immune system is pretty strong. You know? When I was a kid, I used to eat dirt. My mom, I didn't care. <laughs> get strong. Be strong like bull. <laughs> That's good. So I think there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, take supplements and then uh, what happens is your body starts to rely on the supplements and it, it can't handle the, it, I kind of look at it like a, your, in, your antibodies are like a bunch of warriors and they mm -hmm. go, you know what, uh, yeah, all the supplements are handling it. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to Cancun for a while. Yeah. And all of a sudden the disease comes in, they go, oh my God, I got to get a plane back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, Jeff, I don't like to make these too long because we want people to consume it all, but I would like to do you, more. You bet. Yeah. It's fascinating to me. So. Yeah, it's it's you know, it's a different way of looking at things. I mean, I I really love science. I think there's a lot of merit to science. You know, we, we can I see think it's, it's and measure things. It kind of takes the blame away from Donald Trump and China and all the other people. <laughs> You're not gonna take the blame away from Donald Trump. <laughs> never gonna happen. They're never gonna let that happen. I mean, everybody, everybody's blaming everybody because they're looking for a solution. Well, sure, to the that's, that's what they do. You know. It's the universe. What are you going to do? Instead of addressing the problem, right? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, Jeff, appreciate you taking the time. Oh, you bet. Thank you. Thank that's, you. Uh, I appreciate it, Brad. Fun. Okay, yeah, we had fun. Peace. <laughs> you bet. Same to you and, and plenty blessings to you and your family and everybody else out there. Okay, thanks. You bet. Bye.